Ken Whiting with Paddle TV and in this video we are talking about proper paddling technique. Now let me say right from the outset that one of the joys of flat water kayaking is that you don't need proper paddling technique. I mean the most important thing is that we're getting off our iPads and we're getting outdoors and having an outdoor experience. But by developing proper paddling technique you're going to do a few things. For one, you're going to be able to paddle more comfortably. You're going to be able to paddle for longer. And you're going to be able to really progress as a paddler. And so that's why it's important to develop proper paddling technique. And we're going to start by looking at your paddle. And let's look at how to hold your paddle. The first thing to talk about when holding a paddle is your hand position. Your hands should be centered on the paddle. What I mean by centered is that they should be, your hands should be equal distance from each blade. Otherwise, your hands should be roughly, they should make a 90 degree bend. If you put the paddle on top of your head, head here, you should have around a 90 degree bend. That's a good, slightly wider than shoulder width grip. A little side note, these suckers right here, these things, I've seen so many different things done with them. People have used them to position their hands. They put them right down at the base. What these things are, these are drip rings. And what they are is a preventative measure, measure to stop those, oh, well, there we go, the drips from the paddle running down all the way to your hands. And then if it does that, then it runs down your arms and into your down your armpit and down your back and it sucks so with these drip rings it stops that from happening so you want to bring those drip rings up i'd say you know a good hand hand width or so so that when you take the stroke uh the drip ring isn't going into the water because if it is going into the water then water is going to be on the other side of the drip ring and it's going to run into your hands down your arms your armpit your back and that sucks. So there you go, side note. Now something else to consider when we talk about holding your paddle is when you're paddling, when you're holding your paddle, you really want to have a nice relaxed grip on your paddle. No death grips on the paddle. There's a few things that are going to happen if you have a too strong of a grip. For one, your, your arms are going to get tired. It can easily lead to tendonitis and you're going to get blisters more easily. So stay relaxed there's no need to grip this paddle overly hard another side note <laughs> when you're starting paddling and if you're if you don't paddle that often when you hold a paddle this part of your thumb right here is going to be a pressure point and if you do a, if you jump right into a long day of paddling there's a good chance you're going to end up with a blister at this part of your thumb and so a Bring a first aid kit on your paddling trip so you can, if you start to get a blister, you can put a band-aid, something to reduce that friction on there, or even a piece of duct tape, or be proactive about it. And before you go out, put a piece of duct tape around your thumb, just so it's not rubbing, the paddle isn't rubbing right on the skin. Anyway, there you go, my little side note. Next thing to talk about with paddles is that paddles ha can have varying twists or feathers. Now the twi twist or feather of a paddle is, is the offset that the blades are on. This one has no twist, no feather. The blades are in line with each other. But nearly all two-piece paddles have options to have a, an offset or a twist on the paddle. Now the reason for that is, let's give this one, oh that's a good 60 degree offset, is when I take a stroke on this side, now this blade in the air it's slicing through the air and that's a lot there's a lot less wind resistance unless you're trying to shave seconds or milliseconds off a of time in a race or you're dealing with really windy conditions on a frequent basis then my feeling is you really don't need an offset a zero twist no offset blades in line with e with each other is a much more intuitive paddle to deal with and especially when you're learning to to manage and so i use a zero degree offset myself i actually started 30 years ago with a 90 degree offset that was the norm back then 
uh, and I gradually moved. I moved to 60, I moved to 30, I moved to 15, and now I'm, I just use a zero, a no twist paddle. If you do use a twisted paddle, a paddle with some type of offset, I'll give this one 60 degrees of off offset here, or that's a bit more than that. Um, then the way you're gonna use this, I'm right-handed, so my right hand is gonna be the control hand. Now that's, quick control hand is gonna stay relaxed, but fixed in that position. And after I take that stroke, my top hand is staying quite loose, I'm gonna to need to, in order to put this next stroke in, rotate the blade or the whole paddle shaft so that I can plant that next blade in flush and get a good stroke. So this left hand stays relatively loose stays loose and then I can just pull. I don't need to ever close my hand hard in order to take a stroke. So that's the theory behind um, paddling with a, using a paddle with an offset. There's no right or wrong, absolutely no right or wrong. Some people feel very strongly about uh, paddling with a twist and not. Uh, it, for me, it's really a matter of personal preference. I suggest people start with no twist simply because it's more intuitive to use uh, and therefore easier. Here's another side note. Sand in kayaks sucks. <laughs> Do whatever you can. Knock your, your sand off your shoes or your feet. Just do whatever you can to get, avoid having sand in your kayak because when you have sand in your kayak, your feet, the sand inevitably will get underneath your heels and then you've got, it's just sandpaper underneath your heels all day. That sucks. Sand gets in, just, it just has a way of getting into all the cracks. It'll jam your foot pegs. It'll be a pain in your butt. So wash the sand out, bring a sponge in your kayak so that when sand and water do get in, you can sop it up and drain it out. There you go, the next side note. Let's get back to it. Let's get into actual paddling technique. But before we do, a quick note, I wanna send a special thanks to Liquid Logic. They are the sponsor of this video. Now. I am in the Liquid Logic Saluda 12, a brand new kayak they came out with this year. And I actually just took this particular kayak on a great test run down the Paint Rock River in Alabama about two weeks ago. And I did a full testing that day. You can see the full review, unbiased review of this kayak. What I can tell you without spoiling the surprise is that I wouldn't be doing this video in this kayak if I didn't think really highly of it. And so I'll leave a link in the description box down below so you can watch the full review of this kayak as well as the Paddle Tales uh, video with the adventure we had on the Paint Rock River. All right, back to it. All right, so paddling technique. I'm not going to get too deep into individual strokes here. I've got a video that, that does that, the top three uh, paddling strokes video, which again, I'll leave a link in the description box down below for that one. But what I am gonna talk about is key techniques that really apply to all strokes. And the first one is something I alluded to earlier, torso rotation. And what is torso rotation? Torso rotation is used to get your core muscles involved so that you're not just using your arms. I've had people leave comments and I'm sure people will leave comments on this video saying, he's you still using his arms. Look at how much arms he's using. Well, that's okay. It's not that you don't use your arms. It's just you don't want to just use your arms. Get your whole body into the stroke. And if using your arms, if you're, you have the strength to use your arms as well as your core, then use them. You'll get, you do get more power from it, but your core is so much more powerful than your arms. So if you want to be able to paddle more uh, for longer and with more power, you have to incorporate the power of your core muscles and that's what torso rotation does. And to put it in to, uh, as an example of how you use torso rotation, if I want to turn my kayak to the left. Instead of just using my arms to push water, I'm gonna turn my whole upper body, plant the stroke, and now as I push with my arms, I'm going to be unwinding with my whole body. I'm pushing with my arms and turning my upper body. And that's torso rotation for a sweep stroke. And this applies to every stroke you take. 
your forward stroke. It's not just your arms, or it shouldn't be your, just your arms. You want to incorporate torso rotation, and that means when I reach for a stroke, if I'm reaching for a stroke on the left-hand side, I'm not just reaching with the paddle, I'm reaching with the paddle, but also with that shoulder. I'm turning my upper body. Now when I plant that blade and I pull on it, I'm not just pulling with my arms, I'm pulling with my arms and unwinding my body. Now my body is naturally, because I've unwound it, is naturally already turned in the next direction. My shoulder is forward and then reach, drop down the next blade and pull that stroke through as I unwind my upper body. That's a very quick run through of how to apply torso rotation to sweep strokes and forward strokes. Again, I go into a lot more depth about that in the, uh, the, the video that about the specific strokes that I'm going to leave a link in the description box for. Now, something else that's worth mentioning about all strokes that you take is that it's not just your upper body and it's not, you know, you're not just your core and not just your arms. You can actually get your legs involved to, uh, with each stroke as well. And the way you do that is by, you can pushing, you can push off the foot brace that's on the stroking side of the kayak. So in this case, if I take a, a sweep stroke, on my left side, as I take that stroke, I'll push with my left foot peg, on my, with my left leg on that left foot brace. Similarly, if I'm doing a backstroke, I'm pushing on that left pedal to get more power. Not only get, really how I'm getting more power is I'm using that to help my core uh, get involved with the stroke. And that applies to the forward stroke as well. When you're paddling, you can push off the foot peg on the stroking side of the boat. So as I take a left stroke, I'm pushing slightly off my left foot peg, right stroke, right foot peg. I haven't done a side note in a long time. So here's another quick side note, sunglasses. I know I'm not wearing them right now because I don't like to talk to you and wear sunglasses at the same time, but when you're paddling in the sun, sunglasses are actually a really important piece of your kit. And the reason for that is, well, there's a couple of reasons. For one, the additional glare you get off the water, even when you're, when you're wearing a hat, you're still getting, your eyes are still getting hit by reflective light. And if you do this a lot, your eyes will pay a price. For the long term, not to mention during the day, getting headaches and stuff. But the second thing, if you, with a pair of sunglasses, if you get polarized lenses, then it is, it's really amazing how much more you can see of the underworld. You, it cuts off the, gl uh, the glare coming off the water and you can see rocks and logs and just the underworld down below. And this is one of the big reasons kayak anglers use polarized sunglasses it, so that they can see the structure, uh, cover and structure that fish hold to. That's all I got to say about sunglasses. Another thing to talk about with regards to paddling, paddles and paddling technique is the angle, the type of stroke you're taking. And there's typically uh, two types of strokes, a low angle stroke and a high angle stroke. A low angle stroke is a very casual stroke. The, the paddle is held low. It's a relaxed stroke that you can maintain for a long period of time. There are specific paddles that are low angle paddles and they tend to have blades that are, are long and narrow uh, and which reach out further uh, in the water because your paddle, it needs to in order to take that stroke. This blade is not a low angle. This is a high angle uh, paddle blade. It's a big, bigger, a fatter uh, blade face. And that's because I'm gonna be digging that paddle in right alongside the kayak. My other hand is gonna be up at around eye level. Now, this is a more aggressive stroke, more powerful stroke. It's not a stroke that's easily kept up all day long. It's more for bursts of energy. The benefit of that stroke is that you're pulling alongside the kayak and more of your energy is transferred into forward propulsion. Whereas when you're doing a low angle stroke, when your paddle's out to the side there, uh, you're turning the kayak more with each stroke you take. So it's not as efficient a stroke for 
forward movement, but it is efficient, uh, more efficient for you, a long day of paddling and being able to maintain a cadence over a long period of time. There's no right or wrong. It really depends on the type of paddling that you're doing and, and you have to choose a, a, a paddle that corresponds with that. All right, and that brings us to our next side note. And this side note is about giving people tips like I am right now. If the tip gets too long, then people start to get really bored. And so that's why I'm gonna end this tip right now. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to Paddle TV if you haven't already, and stay tuned because we got lots more tips, side notes, gear reviews, and paddling adventures coming your way.